to make sure that hormone replacement is done in a safe manner. Uh, I think a lot of people are trying to jump on the bandwagon. It looks good on their website to say they do hormone replacement and they're not doing it the way I think it should be done. I think a lot of people are being overdosed with hormones. If you have good liver function, you can do fine with being overdosed. Your detoxification system will handle it. But there are a lot of people that detoxification system can handle it and they are being hurt by hormone replacement. And if this continues, it's going to become more and more restricted use for hormone replacement. We already know the drug companies are trying to shut down uh, compounding pharmacies and not make it available. We don't need to have people out there uh, teaching people the wrong way to do it. And I'm not going to call any names. And to only base their success by oh, my patient feels good, and they keep coming back because when they when their hormones get low, they get miserable. Well, and I, I probably shouldn't say, but that is an addiction, okay? You can give someone to the point, especially on estrogen, where their receptors are looking for that estrogen, and if they don't have it, they scream bloody murder. And that is an addiction. That's not a therapy. That is addiction. And I think a lot of people out there are getting their patients addicted to hormones and that works great if you just want to make sure that the patient keeps coming back but i don't think that's what we should be about we should be about doing what the science says and i'm talking about the physiology you can have plenty of papers that will tell you or you can make it say whatever you want it to say that estrogen does this and progesterone does that whatever but if you have an adequate way of measuring something and you know what normal is and you can get it back to normal, that is the way to do it. I really want to take time and make sure that people understand this philosophy. And, and, and another thing I, I, I want to say is that if you have an adequate way of measuring something, if you have an adequate way of measuring something, you don't have to have a bunch of protocols. I hear about, oh, we're going to show you the newest protocols in hormone replacement therapy. There are no new protocols in hormone replacement therapy. Is there a new protocol in uh, insulin? No, you measure the glucose, you give them some insulin, and then you recheck their glucose. You don't have to have a new protocol in, hormone, in, in glucose, or, 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 or glucose control. You don't have to have a new protocol in cholesterol control. You, you don't have to have a new protocol in blood pressure control. Is the blood pressure normal or is it not? Okay, if it's not, give more of the medication. If it is, then hold at that dose. So for me to have all of these convoluted things based on symptoms and hormones makes absolutely no sense to me. I see a patient. I think they have hormone issues. I test them. I do a saliva test. If the progesterone is low, I give them progesterone. I see if the symptoms are better, then I retest them, just like I retested CNSVS. I retest the HRV. Is that you don't have to make up a bunch of protocols. I see the I see these advertisers come and find the newest protocols on hormone replacement. You don't need that. You need to test them appropriately. You need to give the hormone that is low. You need to retest them and make sure that the hormone is normal again. That's all you have to do. If I have to spend two days to get that across to you, I'll get it across to you in two days. If I have to do two weeks to get it across to you, but it's such a hard thing for people to understand. I, I, I realized that because I did a whole residency and we didn't even talk about measuring hormones. We only gave birth control pills and we gave Primarin and Provera based on whether or not they had a uterus. That's totally asinine. It was, it's the craziest thing I've ever heard of. Now, it seemed very normal to me then because that's what everybody else was doing. And that's my whole get out of line caterpillar thing. Just because everybody else is doing it doesn't mean that it's correct. If you can measure something, you can manage it. And so I, I'm a, I, I don't own a saliva lab. I don't have any interest in a saliva lab. But I'm telling you, learning how to understand salivary testing learning how to use it and to base treatment on it changed my career forever. I wouldn't be 
part of American Functional Medicine Association if it hadn't been for that revelation that I can understand hormones and I can treat women and men safely and I can feel good about doing it because I have a test that shows me I'm doing it right. I don't have to wait until the symptoms get too bad. I don't have to wait. I don't have to give HCG because I gave testosterone and their testicles shrank. I don't have to wait until they had uh, postmenopausal bleeding to lower the estrogen. I don't have to wait until they have a positive mammogram to tell them to stop taking estrogen. I can do it because I know how to measure it, so therefore it allows me to manage it. We're going to give a certification. We'll give a test. We'll do some follow-up webinars. But I feel compelled. I started doing this in really in, in 2000. So it was 15 years ago I started talking about this. So then it became where everybody was talking about it. I said, well, I got to move on. I'm going to talk about cortisol. I'm going to talk about GI. I'm going to talk about brain function. Well, it's been 15 years, and I feel like I got to go back because it's starting to get out of hand because people are making up stuff, and they're making it more complicated than it has to be. So fewer and fewer people do it because it seems too complicated. Oh, I can't keep learning all these new protocols. Huh? I've never learned a protocol. I look at the test. If progesterone is low, I give it. I retest them. If it's too high, I lower the dose. The estrogen is low, I give it. If it's too high, I lower the dose after the retesting. That's what you do. Cortisol. Oh, nighttime cortisol is high. Let me use some phosphatidylserine or phosphorylated serine, whatever you want to use. Let me lower it. Oh, the CNS, the memory function. Let me give what I know, phospholipids. Let me make sure there's enough oxygen going to the brain. If you know the physiology and you can test to see what part of the physiology is abnormal, then you can make it normal again. So I'm going to get off my soapbox, but, you know, I'm, I'm kind of passionate about hormones. And I'm passionate because, um, you know, I'm just passionate about it. I guess because I'm, I'm an OBGYN and I feel bad that uh, I really kind of feel bad that I, it took me so long to understand how to really help women. Uh I really do feel bad about that. So, so I'm I'm going to go back out. If if uh, you're interested in that certification, uh, again, you can email us. But we're going to send that out to you. Uh, please uh, become a member so that uh, you'll get a discount on those certification programs. 